Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about low blood sugars, intermittent fasting, and your liver. I recently did a video on talking about the adrenals and low blood sugars, intermittent fasting. Today we're going to talk about the liver. There is another hormone that is involved, but I'm not going to get into that at this point. Now what happens when you have a hypoglycemic reaction or low blood sugars, there's two main things, there's other things too, but there's two main things that will keep your sugars high um, so to prevent the uh, drop in blood sugar, okay? The adrenals are one, and then the liver is the other one. So in summary, if there's an adrenal issue, you need to focus on your sleep, your B vitamins, potassium, decrease stress to improve that so you can have the adrenal glands help you compensate and not experience the symptoms of hypoglycemia, which is dizziness, irritability, and a great difficulty in doing intermittent fasting because you have to go a long period of time uh, without eating and you don't want to crash and burn and feel kind of funky. The primary target for hypoglycemia is the brain, okay? So you're going to have all sorts of cognitive issues and mood issues, okay? So if there's liver damage, if you have a fatty liver or you have cirrhosis, it's scar tissue, that can come from a fatty liver, which both come from high levels of insulin or insulin resistance, Okay? That's going to inhibit your ability to store sugar in the liver. The great majority of all the stored sugar that helps you between the meal to regulate your uh, fuel is called glycogen and it's stored in the liver. So if your liver's damaged, you won't have the capacity of stored sugar to release and keep your blood sugars normal when you're not eating. Okay? So that's number one because you just don't have the quantity of sugar to stabilize yourself between meals because the liver is fatty or there's some type of damage to it. Number two, you have a problem with this other hormone called IGF-1. That's insulin-like growth factor number one. Now what is that? That's another hormone that is very similar to insulin, but it works when you're not eating. Whereas insulin converts things into fat, IGF does the opposite and releases the energy from fat and stored sugar into energy between the meals. So you have these two things working back and forth. Insulin triggered when you're eating and IGF triggered when you're not eating for the purpose of maintaining blood sugars, okay? But if there's damage to this hormone, the blood sugars can drop too low and you can have all the problems of bl low blood sugar, okay? So there's several things that can improve IGF number one. Number one, keeping your insulin down by cleaning up the diet, not eating sugar. Uh, number two, increasing exercise. That will help this right here. Uh, in intermittent fasting, which we'll come back to, and sleep. These are all things that can improve this in addition to fixing your liver. If you have a fatty liver, you need to eat healthy. You need to take choline to strip the fat off. You need to do keto and intermittent fasting, but also cirrhosis. Um, that can be improved if you're doing intermittent fasting. And there's also an enzyme you can take called seropeptase. I'll put a link down below for a video. If you have cirrhosis, you can improve it. So anything that will improve the liver will improve IGF number one. And this works very closely with human growth hormone. They almost have the same job. So the whole goal is to go from one meal to the next, do intermittent fasting over a longer period of time, and prevent the low blood sugar situation, okay? By improving the liver and the adrenals. So when you're trying to do intermittent fasting, some of the things in addition to adding fat, apple cider vinegar, potassium, B vitamins, and going at this very gradual, is you want to improve the liver by increasing something called vegetables, okay? Large quantities of vegetables or salad. It's kind of a new concept. So the biggest problem that I see with people doing intermittent fasting and they're having a hard time is they don't consume enough vegetables. So I know you might not have a problem with this, but you probably know people who just don't like vegetables. Um, but this is really a very important thing to increase when you're doing intermittent fasting that goes beyond just eating more fat. If you don't have enough vegetables, and not talking about just increasing potassium, I'm talking about all the other things that are in vegetables that will actually heal the liver and allow you to go a long period of time without eating. So if you're having difficulty doing intermittent fasting because of your blood sugars, you need to make sure the adrenals are good and the liver by consuming more vegetables. Thank you so much for watching. 
hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It was called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.